Hello, this is Bryant Myers, author of PEMF, The Fifth Element of Health, and I'm really excited about this video because we're going to continue talking about light and electromagnetic waves and also the different forms of energy medicine and how they're different. So let's get right into it. In the last video, we saw how Maxwell's equations naturally led to electromagnetic waves, which includes light. This comes about because Maxwell's correction to Ampere's law says that a changing electric field induces a changing magnetic field, whereby Faraday's law says that a changing magnetic field induces a changing electric field, and this cycle continues on and on. And these oscillations are electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are called traverse waves because the electric and magnetic field oscillations act in directions perpendicular to the direction of motion. And you can see this animation here of a, of a linearly polarized um, electromagnetic wave. So how fast are these electromagnetic waves moving? Well, Maxwell calculated that the speed of each wave is equal to the electric field's magnitude divided by the magnetic field's magnitude. And this speed works out to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We call this the speed of light, and we denote that with the small letter c. And it's actually the speed of every electromagnetic wave in a vacuum, and, and pretty much and air as well. So now we have an understanding of what light is. It's simply made of electromagnetic waves traveling at the speed of light. Like waves in the ocean, electromagnetic waves can vary in their wavelength, frequency, and amplitude. Remember from module one that wavelength is the distance between peaks of a wave, and frequency is how many times a wave peaks in every second. Or stated another way, frequency is the number of times per second that something cycles or repeats itself. So visible light is an electromagnetic wave, but it is only a tiny little sliver of the vast electromagnetic spectrum. Now, if you laid the entire electromagnetic spectrum across the Brooklyn Bridge, the portion we see with our eyes would only be about a few feet wide. So we're just not seeing a whole vast universe of frequencies beyond the visible light spectrum. Now, what are these frequencies? Well, they're typically categorized as radio waves, microwaves, infrared, of course, visible, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. So the electromagnetic spectrum, this vast spectrum, covers some 80 octaves of frequencies. That's 2 to the 80th power. It's just an extremely vast range that basically starts from about the size of a proton and goes up to the size of the Earth and beyond, if you look at the wavelengths. Now, it turns out that our view of light as an electromagnetic wave is only half the story. Quantum mechanics shows us that light also has particle-like nature called the photon. So we have two very different ideas of how light works, as waves like electromagnetic waves and as the motion of massless particles called photons. This pair of explanations is called the wave-particle duality, and it's a recurring theme in quantum mechanics. Weirder still is the static electric and magnetic field also exhibits this wave-particle duality. In fact, the electric and magnetic forces we have been talking about can be modeled by the exchange of what are called virtual photons. In fact, this is quantum electrodynamics, and it's actually the most accurate theory of electricity and magnetism that we have. Virtual photons are constantly emitted and reabsorbed around charged objects at rest or in motion, so this includes both electric and magnetic fields. All of electricity and magnetism comes about from the energy exchange in either virtual, which the electric or magnetic force photons, or real photons like an electromagnetic wave. So basically everything is photons, everything is light, as they say. Okay, now let's look at the different forms of energy medicine. While there are other types of energy medicine like sound therapy, vibration therapy that are not electrical and magnetic, most energy medicine devices do incorporate electricity and magnetism or electromagnetic waves in one way or another. While Maxwell's equations do in fact unify electricity, magnetism, and light, it must be emphasized that these are very different forms of energy and provide a natural way to categorize different energy medicine devices. So we're going to look at each of these briefly, just to summarize the different types of forces, and then we're going to look at what the Earth is giving us in relation to these type of energies, and we're going to use that as a guiding principle to see what we really want and need in an energy medicine device. Let's start with electric fields and electric currents. Now, electric forces are conservative forces, and we use Column's law or Gauss's law to calculate those fields, and the Lorentz force law to determine the forces of those fields. Okay, let's look at electric fields and electric currents of the Earth first, and then we'll look at energy medicine devices that use them. Now, the Earth has a fair weather electric field of around 100 to 300 volts per meter, and thunderstorms play a role in charging this electric field. Now, the Schumann resonance have an electric field component, 
The Schumann resonance electric field amplitude is about 300 microvolts per meter and is much smaller than the static fair weather electric field that we talked about, but it's extremely biologically active due to the resonance and entrainment with the human brain. Now let's look at the electrical currents that are naturally occurring in the Earth. These are called telluric currents. The telluric currents are geomagnetically induced waves that flow across the surface of the Earth. That is, there is literally natural electricity flowing through the ground, which is one of the reasons grounding or earthing is so healthy. It's the Earth's natural microcurrent therapy. So what are the best electric field and electric current devices? Well, honestly, in my opinion, you don't need any electric field or electrical current, e-stem, TENS units type of energy devices. Why? Well, as we'll see later, PMFs just flat out work better as far as inducing natural microcurrents. And in my opinion, the best microcurrent therapy is earthing or grounding that is walking a half hour barefoot every day or gardening, you know, just getting your bare skin on the ground at the beach, in the garden, going camping. Next type of energy we're going to look at is electromagnetic waves. So electromagnetic waves actually emit real photons now and these photons come from accelerating charges and interestingly light has a force but it's extremely small compared to electric and magnetic fields which is further proof of the difference between electric fields, magnetic fields, and electromagnetic waves or light. Now the Earth's natural electromagnetic waves are mainly in the visible and infrared and UV spectrum. There is some radio and cosmic and gamma rays, but a lot of those are filtered out by the atmosphere or negligible. So as far as what we need, obviously we need visible light. In fact, we need full spectrum light in the day and we want to minimize that blue light at night. We want UVB for vitamin D and we also need red light and near infrared as studies have shown in red light therapy. And also far infrared and middle infrared are also important. You know, far infrared saunas are very therapeutic and detoxifying and actually the earth naturally radiates infrared. So as far as energy medicine devices that incorporate light therapy, as we mentioned, red light therapy, sauna therapy, laser therapy, different types of infrared devices, and light therapy, color therapy devices, there's a whole lot of them, but they all deal typically in this spectrum with infrared, near infrared, red light, uh, different types of color therapies, and you know, obviously UV tanning beds, some people recommend that for northern climates. So in my opinion, the only two light therapy devices you need besides good full spectrum light bulbs and low blue lights at night is a good infrared sauna and I do like red light therapy. So those are two things to look into to add to PEMF. Otherwise, just get out in the sun and enjoy the benefits of natural sunlight. Okay, finally we have magnetic fields or PEMFs, which is the main focus of this course. So unlike electric fields, magnetic fields and forces are non-conservative and velocity dependent. Well, it turns out magnetic force of virtual photons have a very different quality than real photons from electromagnetic waves and electric field virtual photons in both their coherence and penetration. And it's these two qualities, coherence and penetration, that make magnetic field therapy and PMF therapy unique in all of energy medicine. So first, coherence. The virtual photons and magnets and current loops that give rise to magnetic fields and magnetic forces, they're all lined up in the same direction. So coherent energy is when the energy of the fields is all flowing in the same direction. So coherent energy works against entropy, where incoherent energy or decoherence is entropy. And so the only two forms of energy medicine that have coherent photons are laser therapy and PEMF. Now the second thing is penetration. The magnetic force is also much more deeply penetrating than other forms of energy medicine due to the fact there are no magnetic monopoles, hence no shielding of any type of fields. So no surface needle electrode is needed, there's no handheld tubes, no electric shocks of any kind. Magnetic fields are therefore non-invasive in the purest sense and far easier and more effective to apply. There's no interference, impedance, or dielectrics like electric fields or microcurrents and no attenuation reflection absorption issues like light therapy, laser therapy, LEDs, etc. This allows magnetic field therapy and PMF therapy devices to penetrate into every nook and cranny of the body down to the very nucleus of every cell and the very bone marrow of your body. The comparison between magnetic field lines around a current carrying loop and a bar magnet show that the two are nearly identical. At the center of the loop, the magnetic field lines are all perpendicular and lined up in the same direction. Like we said, they're coherent. This is why you want larger coils in your PMF device so you can have more surface area exposure to these pure magnetic fields. 
PMF coils are like the speakers in a stereo. Would you want cheap speakers with the best stereo? Of course not. So we'll talk more about waveform and frequency in the next two videos, but for now understand the importance of using low frequency, low intensity currents in PMF devices and using large, multiple, tightly wound circular current loops. And of course we want a full body mat device. Now, as shocking as it sounds, I have, I actually have in my house many PMF devices, and there's just not many of them that understand this basic science. Most PMF devices just don't cover a large enough area, or those PMF devices with just one coil. All the high intensity devices create unhealthy radiation fields and unhealthy field strengths as reviewed by respective organizations like the ICNIRP. As a former physics professor, it really shocks me that hardly any PMF companies are doing this right. So how do these pure coherent pulse magnetic fields interact and heal and help the body? Well, the answer is resonance. Through the phenomena of resonance, it turns out that frequency is really the main thing when it comes to broadcasting electromagnetic waves wirelessly from one point to another, not intensity. Frequency matters in energy medicine, not intensity. And even better than electromagnetic resonance through radiation is magnetic resonance through pure pulsating magnetic fields. We'll see in the next video that new technology like Ytricity and other magnetic resonant energy transfer systems are much more efficient and more effective form of energy transfer than electromagnetic resonance or induction. And this is exactly what PMF therapy is and why it's better than other forms of energy medicine. So I look forward to sharing that with you in the next video.